pretty good. A whole regiment of KGB Marines. And it looks like a peaceful country road. We don't need to speak here, only in Russian. Good. I can still remember how. It's wonderful to see you. You do better. Now I'm told we are not to speak English here. Yes, absolutely correct. My orders. It makes it easier for our low-level spies to follow the conversation. Все областные советники, командующие зоны космические действий Южной Флориде и советники патриом международным городам. And the women? Ah, подарок от председателя Party Girls. Und du mal jetzt stoppen mit dem Panorama, ist nicht gar kein Rosenkrieg, Ruski, Jebeschen, Kampagne. For information, he gets careless with pillow talk. We can all be proud. The men in this room have accomplished something unprecedented in the history of the world. But for ourselves and a handful of colleagues, who knows? Nuclear holocaust, internal rebellion. We have bought time and now we must finish the job. There's continued unrest in the Soviet Union. The relief which we assume would permit our people greater opportunity and affluence seems less than wholly successful. There's an increase in inflation malingering in the workplace. American laborers and technicians sent to the factories have helped somewhat, but they are, they are recalcitrant and retain their essentially anti-socialist attitudes. The bureaucracy is becoming more befuddled. Marginally capable managers suddenly given greater responsibilities in short. The problems of 10 years ago have not disappeared, but become more complex, more dangerous. Secondly, there's increasing unrest throughout the United States. You are all aware of the Alaska problem. Alaska was never pacified, and it is costing us 10 divisions plus an unwarranted amount of air power to control it. The rain is very conducive to resistance, and the people have become fierce fighters. The lights indicate reported resistance. Fortunately, it is totally disorganized and frequently no more than mandatory, but we have seen an increase in the number and boldness of the incidents. The Central Committee is demanding that America be neutralized immediately. Sir, this is a country which has no army. There is no communication between the areas. The people have become self-absorbed and dispirited. Our leaders in the Kremlin are still afraid of ghosts. American ghosts, which they believe rise up to haunt them. Our timetable needs to be accelerated. We must act before Americans begin to understand they have options. None of us anymore believe Americans will resist to the death, but there are other options. They could simply refuse to cooperate. They could unify in spirit. Now is the time for the next step. We are going to break up the United States of America into separate countries based on the present areas and join them into a new North American community. How? That's what you're here for. The President and Congress determined the necessity for a decentralized government in which separate parts of the country could more effectively deal with their unique problems and issues. 
Each area is governed by a supervising board made up of the governors of the states comprising the areas. Individual state legislatures continue to make laws for individual states. The American Unity Party supplies advisory groups both to each administrative area as well as an advisory group for the national government. When you return to your homes, you are invited to join in building a new America. No longer will you be victimized by the rich and powerful. No longer a victim of a system which breeds success at the expense of your fellow man. You are invited to join a people no longer about to plunge the world into a nuclear death. When you return to your homes, you are invited to join in building a new America. No longer will you be victimized by the rich and powerful. No longer a victim of a system which breeds success at the expense of your fellow man. You are invited to join a people no longer about to plunge the world into a nuclear death. When you return to your homes, you are invited to join in building a new America. No longer will you be victimized by the rich and powerful. No longer a victim of a system which breeds success at the expense of your fellow man. You are to thank all of you as we have traveled throughout the central administrative area it has been gratifying to see so much interest in the return to traditional classical dance with its grace and discipline after what we had experienced in the last few years before the transition I'm sure you've seen tapes when undisciplined gyrations of the body were considered self-expression thank you again Mrs. Miller, we'll let you know. Uh, hi, Amanda. This is Amanda Bradford. Jacqueline's mother. You're not going to pick her. There's a lot more to these competitions than being a good dancer. She was wonderful. How can you possibly not give her a chance? We're looking for the dancer who is able to become part of a core one of a group expressing the kind of spirit and attitude we'd like to see in our young people. What we want to see is the best people get what they deserve. Especially when they work damn hard for it. Sometimes cooperation is more important than talent. I'll just bet it is.
Hi, Josh. Hi. How are you guys going? Just out for a ride. Got some gas? Corn gas. A little for the tractor, a little for me. Yeah. Honey, can I talk to you a minute? What for? I don't like you going out with him. Oh, really? I couldn't tell. You're so subtle. He is no source of pride to his folks. Okay, and that's what's important. I don't want you out after curfew. God, Daddy, you just don't understand anything. Yeah, I don't. What's the matter with her? I mean, why does she do that? I mean, she... She knows I don't like that kid. Did you ask her how her day went? Didn't have a chance. Anything special? Yeah, tried for the district company. How'd she do? She was rejected. Oh. Who beat her out? The judges. What? She was too inventive, too original, too good. What hell's that supposed to mean? She didn't fit in. Do you know what one of them said? She said sometimes cooperation is more important than talent. But hell, we know all about that, don't we? About cooperation. Amanda, that's not fair. No, what's not fair is Jackie losing her chance. I went by there today. She was amazing. I couldn't believe it. it made me cry. Our daughter, she deserves a chance. Everybody feels that way. Everybody isn't as good as she okay, is. Okay, let's not get upset, all right? Look, Peter, you know, I understand why I have to stand in line for tomatoes when you can have practically anything you want delivered to our back door. But this is different. This is your daughter's life. And I don't know if it'll turn out to be anything or not, but she has a right to... At least a right not to be penalized for being good. You don't think I love her as much as you do? I don't know. I guess so, maybe. Sometimes I think what you love is this... This idea about what's fair you carry around in your mind. None of this is fair, all right? I believe in my daughter. Maybe sometimes I even believe in myself. That's all I believe in. I guess I have to go back to the tomato line now. <laughs> the chairman's gift is not to your liking. It's that actress, that beautiful American actress. Andre, you and your actresses. Does she still want to go to Hollywood and become a star? I'm afraid so. Why don't you just arrange it, or are you concerned that the lure and the corruption and glamour of California might win over the power of the Central Areas Advisor? I haven't been to California recently. I am unable to talk about corruption and glamour. I have, and I can. Here we are, ten years after the most brilliant coup in history, and there is still corruption and glamour in California. The difference is that now it is glamour and corruption working for us. Another <laughs> problem. I didn't think you were dreaming about our American Riviera. We may have to look beyond our advisory and party committees to find someone that the people 
really trust. And uh, it occurs to me that if we use the creation of the new positions of Governor General to create the new countries, well, I don't know. I will have to think about it some more. Whatever you do, Andrei Denisovich, be careful. We cannot make a mistake. Be careful. Stayed away a little longer. <laughs> Who knows what kind of greeting I'd get? Who knows what kind of greeting you'll get now? Hmm. How did you know I was coming back? Uh, my friends in the resistance. I always check with them to find out where you are. And did they tell you where I was? <laughs> yeah, some girl, some Russian. <laughs> Now you'll see why there is so little to fear from the resistance. General Samanov sends his best, but he claims he misses you. He didn't believe him. In the KGB, we never question our superiors. Do you know a Peter Bradford? He and Devon grew up together. Vietnam War together. But I haven't seen him for years. Yours was one of the few advisory committee votes for him. Most of the committee votes are safe party line. But you see something else. He's an effective administrator. People like him. He's not particularly imaginative or ambitious politically. Manageable. He's not a stooge. Which is more than can be said for the other candidates. What did you have in mind? Well, I have approved him to be one of the five candidates for the area governor general. I don't think he stands a chance. The uh, committee supports the good governor from Missouri. Well, I shall meet him at the reception in Omaha. And then we shall see. up Robert this morning. Why? Oh, this is approved. His claim was passed by the committee. It was the satire, the one we uh, were going to do on Broad Street. Well, it wasn't Andre. <sighs> he likes theater. Nothing happens without his approval. Oh, for God's sakes. Oh, of course, it doesn't affect you. That's not fair. Kim does outlaw. For her, it's safe. You don't know anything about it. All you have to do to be safe is jump in bed. How the hell would you know? This isn't getting us anywhere. I'm calling a walkout. God. All sitting around posturing like good anti-establishment rebels and calling me a whore. What about you? I don't see you out on some farm in the Midwest shoveling manure or something. So, walk out. There are plenty of directors and hundreds of actors ready to take your place. We're not a nation of selfish, egocentric people. We're the same people who fled tyranny all over the world to build a dream. 
that men and women of all races I had forgotten how good it was could come together in a rich and fruitful land and build a society based on the principle that the should have been shot all of us is to encourage the best within each of us what most Americans assume is impossible has happened it has happened subtly we didn't lose it on the field of battle we lost it in our hearts what's this we lost it with our own tape purpose how did you lost get it vision. told your secretary you needed sex we lost it with our lack of courage and faith in the democratic system he looks familiar and we lost it when it's the American dream of personal freedom somehow became a dream he's of very attractive success. he just got out of prison we must blame it on our break guess he's not so attractive anymore Special interest. Lesson to us all. Corporate interest, minority interests, women against men, old against young. Above all, we must blame it on our failure as individuals to take responsibility for moral choice. I have to talk to you. Country damaged by a destructive. Colonel, we must attend to St. Louis matter. Give me five minutes. God, he's always so grouchy. My watchdog. He's just your aide. Yes. And what, my darling, are you doing here? I thought you had a rehearsal this afternoon. Well, I did. It's about Robert Shelter. You know, the man who wrote my play. Someone arrested him today. I realize you don't have time for this, I but... ordered it. The outdoor theaters are getting out of hand. I've been entirely too lax. We are proliferating, and as they ridicule the government, they are getting dangerous. I'm going to do Robert's satire down on Broad Street. You do this, it is at your own risk. I don't believe you. I can't protect you. You won't, you mean. If you like, just don't do it. Kimberly, I am not free to do anything I want the way I want. I have superiors to whom I must answer. I am surrounded by spies and informers, both American and Soviet. There are men in the Kremlin who have always been and still are suspicious of our entire plan of occupation. They would feel much more comfortable if America were crushed by an iron fist and they may yet do it. What are you so worried about? What difference does it make anyway? I don't like it when you act like that. But how do you want me to act? Want me to reapply for the Lincoln Brigade? Want me to have been born into another family? Look, I didn't mean it like that. I'm gonna get in trouble. So are you. I gotta go. Want to make a run into Omaha? You know my dad won't let me. So? Don't tell him. I don't know, Josh. Come on. All right, well, I'm going. You do what you want. Just. Come on, you want to just put things up there. What's the big deal? I don't want to get any demerits. Maybe if we pretend we're making out? Come on, this is serious. Sure it is. What are you doing here? Um, I had to ask you something. Everybody's supposed to be in class. I know, but this was real important. I'll go right now. I have to report it. I'm going to the principal. No! Listen, you big tired little pimple. Why don't you just keep walking on down that hall? Otherwise, I'm gonna have to tear your head off. It's okay. I'll go to the principal's office. Just forget it, all right? Justin, you're making it worse. 
Do you know that unauthorized meetings are grounds for expulsion? And do you know that you can be arrested? Not only for trespassing, but assault. Okay, Herb, so they're guilty of a capital offense. I say we take them into the quad during lunch hour and we shoot them. Good to help, Allie. Uh huh. What we have here is a question of special privilege. Huh? Always some smart remark. Let me tell you, the time is past when the Milfords owned the county. No kidding. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you that the Milfords of the world are no longer better than the rest of us. Yeah, I think that the question of the Milfords is the subject for the next advisory committee meeting. Herb, I think not having to teach shop anymore has really affected your sense of reality. Please, uh, Allie, we're better. Yeah, I'll tell you what's reality and what isn't. Good, thanks. Herb, why don't you... You stay out of this. I have a responsibility well, to the school. Well, this is a political matter. Oh, come on. I'm declaring Herb. this a political matter. I'm going to bring this issue up before the next advisory committee meeting. Since it involves the county administrator's daughter and well-known hooligan, malcontent, from a former elitist family. And, yeah, well, we shall see. <laughs> we'll see a lot of things. Yeah, I usually do. Such as how it's possible for people of questionable loyalty and character to continue to teach our young people. I gotta tell you, kiddo, I mean, your timing is lousy. It was no big deal. That's the interesting thing about life today. You never know what's a big deal and what isn't. Gotta figure out how to handle this. I think you should just fire Mr. Lister. He's so dumb he's dangerous. Yeah, right. Well, you're right about one thing. He is dangerous. It wasn't Jackie's fault, Peter. Well, I could have guessed that with Justin involved. Well, maybe he's not the easiest kid, but uh, this was pretty innocent. He attacked an eighth grader. You'd have to know the eighth grader. Yeah, right, right. This is all really very funny. <gasps> Come on, Peter. I, as you well know, I'm not a big fan of your favorite nephew. I'm particularly not a fan of Jacqueline hanging around with him, which is over. I came along to give another side of the story, but... Look, you want to make it look like, like there's no issue here, that it's all so trivial that it doesn't matter? I don't like Jacqueline getting involved in, in situations that can work to her disadvantage. Maybe asking kids to stay out of situations that work to their disadvantage and still grow up. That reality ended ten years ago. Yeah. You know, Justin's a lot like Devin, don't you think? Got a lot of good stuff in him. It just kind of busts out in funny places sometimes. What are you going to do? I don't know. There's more to this than you might think. Oh, Daddy, Mr. Lister's an idiot. Yeah. Remember that, that book on the French Revolution I gave you a couple years ago about all the heads being lopped off by the guillotine and until it became a game, good guys, bad guys, it didn't really matter. All that mattered was that the right idiot on the right side pointed the finger at you and your head was next. That's the kind of idiot that Herbert Lister is. 83915. 83915, sir. Your name is Devin William Milford. You are assigned to the town and environs of Milford, Nebraska. You are Devon Milford. Mr. Milford, you will henceforth reside exclusively within a 25-mile radius of the town of Milford. You will reside at the home of your father, William Bradley Milford. And you will report without fail each week to the county administrator's office. If you fail to abide 
by the terms of your parole, you will be returned to prison. If you are caught outside your prescribed area, you will be apprehended and are subject to being shot on sight. You understand? Yes, sir. Next. Sir. My children. I... There's no notation. Bailiff. Next, please. Well, you're a free man. How's it feel? Where the hell's Justin? He's out somewhere. You want some? Sure, they caught some kids across the state line. Hijacking gasoline trucks, something like that. Yeah, they were going to sell it on the black market for drugs. Well, you'd be surprised how fast a trailer full of gas can go. Yeah. Most every farm in the Midwest has a storage tank. They call themselves resistors. Bunch of juvenile delinquents, that's what they are. Well, boys will be boys. Oh, excuse me. Had an appointment. Say the dishes for me. Don't worry, it's just a school board meeting. I always thought it was simple. You were born, you worked hard, you built, worked the damn land at least to a standoff. Maybe sometimes better. Took something out, put something back. Expected sometimes 50, 100 years from now, your name's still there. At least in the land and in your kids. So somebody could always look around and wonder who that hard-working son of a gun was. Dad Devin's coming home. He's been released from that camp. You mean prison? Whatever. He's being paroled. It's going to be like a lot of the other internal exiles, restricted to a 25-mile radius. Well, that gives that bastard 24 and a half miles away from here. He has no choice. We have no choice. What's the matter with you? Well, if you ask me, it's pretty lousy. One of the few people who ever tried to do anything, and he's treated like a leper. He's a damn traitor. And anybody living in this house had better not forget it. You really think you can sell Peter Bradford to the advisory committee? The wonderful thing about advisory committees is you can always tell them what to advise. <laughs> Maybe in the Soviet Union, but not here. Really? Absolutely. How do you explain, then, the amazing success of our occupation? Many of us took the opportunity to create an America we believe in. There were millions of people who never participated in the so-called American dream. 10 to 15 percent of the people were an underclass, Perpetually on welfare, recidivist criminals, undereducated. In Russia, less than 5% of the people enjoy the benefits of society. The clever or lucky ones, the party members, athletes, scientists, all of whom live well in the name of and for the benefit of the other 95%. Now, no one asks the 95% if they're grateful for the sacrifice the 5% are making. Of course, it's all in the name of the ultimate communist man, whom I'm told is still on his way. You're very cynical to be in the KGB. You think you want a new society, but what you really want is power. And the KGB doesn't believe in power? Survival. Survival is power without dogma. We manipulate in terms of the ultimate success of our goals, not their meaning. That's disgusting. And pointless. Yes, I suppose it is. Mm. You're very frustrating. That's a Soviet characteristic, isn't it? Oh, Russian, not Soviet. 
When you go back to Russia, will I have to go with you? Would you want to go? No. I don't want to have my head shaved or be stoned in the street or anything. Maybe I won't go. It would be a shame to have you stoned in the street. Sometimes it seems as though nothing's happened.
Rocket Source. <laughs> Direct from that bed of inequity, free in the national city of San Francisco. A tape, a tape of hog calling the way it looks in the 1968 Democratic Convention. Hey, here. Troops on the beaches maybe would have been different. What we did not expect was that uh, without communications, the United States would revert to a collection of separate peoples. You just got the drop on us. I don't believe it. It worked because you lost your country before we ever got here. You sound disappointed that you succeeded. Why do you wish to help us? I don't want to help you. I want to help my country. There is no country. My people and my... my family, my community. Why do you think I should accept that your purposes and ours are compatible? Because it's better for you to have a productive America. All I have to do is look at the quotas you're still demanding to know that you're still having problems. young people attacking the symbols of power that they can see. President, governors, public buildings. 
They resist in ways that make them feel good, not those that actually accomplish anything. Stupid. Actually, it's a controlled provocation. Our agents stir them up so that we can let them release their frustrations. At the same time, we keep track of them, give them a scare, arrest some. indoctrination of kids give us an incentive give us the incentive to get rid of the occupation and maybe we can prove we can function and not be a threat <laughs> 